ओम सहनावत सहनो भुनक्त सह वीरकवाह तेजस्वीतमस्तुमाषा वह ओ शातिशाशाति ओ पूर्णमद पूर्णमीद पूर्णात्पूर्णमुद्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शातिशाशाति श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बालरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमद्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम गुकारस्वंधकारो वै ऋकारस्तर्त अंधकार निरोधि गुरुरीधीये सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमापर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपराद फर्स्ट वर्ष कर्तुराज्ञया फल कर्म किं पर कर्म तजड़ कर्त आज्ञया फल प्राप्य the phalam the result of an action is obtained by agnya or the command of karta of the creator of ishvara of lord <coughs> as i said this is being addressed to the mimamsakas do say that the it is karma or action itself which gives rise to result or the apurva the unseen for the result born the subtle effect born of karma gives rise to results this is their opinion <coughs> it is being refuted by the statement kartuhu agnaya phalam prapyate because karma tajjaram karma being jaram being inert doesn't have the intelligence <coughs> for determining the result of the action you require intelligence you require to know what all factors what all parameters variables were involved in the performance of an action and what the result will be of those various parameters various variables as i say in the morning if you really want to take into account all the variables you find that the whole universe is involved in performing when an action is performed <clears throat> some some very variables are very powerful but there are other variables also which we may not even know as our swami says there are always hidden variables there are always things that are known and unknown therefore it is not possible to determine what the outcome of the action will be unless you know everything unless you are omniscient 
But Ishvara is omniscient, he is all knowing and therefore he alone can determine what the outcome will be. <coughs> karma kimparam, karma tad jadam. When we know jadam was inert or insentient. Other way this is explained is karma kim param is a question. We said param, phala means svatantram. <coughs> phala nirnaye, phala pradane svatantram. Meaning is karma svatantram independent in determining the outcome? Answer is no, because karma or action is in sense and is not intelligent. <coughs> param can also mean Limitless. Karma kim param. Is karma limitless? No. Karma tad jadam. Because karma is jadam. Jadam can mean inert. So ignorance is inert. And everything born of ignorance also is inert. It is pointed out here that a karma is born ultimately out of ignorance. Karma or action is a result of a desire. And desire is the result of ignorance. Because the self is limitless. If I knew the true nature of myself, then I would know that I'm limitless, I'm adequate. That is the reality about myself. There, there cannot be desire in that which is adequate. Because desire can be for something that I do not have. One cannot desire what one already has. One can desire what one does not have. Like this man who says to God, so when you perform penance, and God appeared before him, God asks him, what do you want? Oh Lord, please give me a head over my shoulder. God says, what? Please give me a head over my shoulder. So I'm sorry, I cannot give you. Why? I thought you are God, you can do anything. He says, but even I also cannot give you what you already have. This is a made up story, not that anybody would ask for this kind of a thing. God says, if you want something inside your head, I can give you. I cannot give you what you already have. There cannot be desire for something that one already has. Desire necessarily is an expression of inadequacy or a felt inadequacy. Desire represents a need, and need represents some lack or a want. As we say, desires are of two kinds. There are desires for what I do not have. If I am a poor person, I can desire for money or wealth, for name, fame. If I am hungry, I can desire food. I am thirsty, there is desire for water, etc. So these desires are understandable. They are desires for something that I do not have. But how about this desire for the glasses of this man? One Sunday morning, this man is reading his newspaper with the reading glasses on. And a friend at that time visits him, he pushes his glasses up there and then talks to friend. The friend leaves him after 15-20 minutes and he starts resuming reading his newspaper. He cannot read because he doesn't have reading glasses on. So he starts searching for the glasses. There's a whole heap of newspapers he searches underneath, such as there, here and below the pillow. He cannot find his glasses, becomes a little impatient and starts shouting, Who has seen my glasses? You always keep my things away. (laughs) 
His wife is listening to all this from the kitchen. This is an everyday affair. She doesn't even respond for some time. But when this fellow started screaming about his glasses, she comes out and asks him, what's the matter? Where are my glasses? So which glasses? My reading glasses. Then she is most amazed. She says, I don't know. She does not oblige him. This conversation goes on for a few minutes. Fortunately for this man, his 15-year-old son happens to come by. He asks him, have you seen my glasses? Which glasses? My dad, my reading glasses. Oh, I can produce reading glasses provided you fulfill one condition. What is it? I should be allowed to go to a movie this evening. Okay. He says, your glasses are right here. And thus he gets the glasses. So there is this desire for glasses. What kind of a desire is that? Is it desire for something that I do not have? Or desire for something that I think I do not have? So we can say that there are two kinds of desires. Desire for something that I do not have. Or desire for something that I, ha I think I do not have. And really, desire behind every desire is to be adequate, is to become free from limitation. Although I desire money, I desire name, fame, power, etc., I hope that by fulfilling those desires, I will become adequate. It is only after the desire is fulfilled that I discover that adequacy has not happened and therefore I desire something else. But behind every desire, there is just one desire, namely desire to become free from limitations, desire to become adequate. <clears throat> Can that desire ever be fulfilled? It is not the desire for something that I do not have. The desire for being adequate is a desire for something that I think I do not have. Because Vedanta clearly says that you are limitless. Brahmava idam agrasit. Upanishad says this person who thinks that is ignorant is Brahman even when he is ignorant. Because of the fructification of the past virtuous deeds, he came in contact with a great teacher who taught him that you are Brahman. He came to know of himself. I'm Brahma Smiti. I'm Brahmaniti. He came to know. <coughs> Tasmat tasaram abhavata. By virtue of that, he became everything. He became limitless. He did not become limitless. He discovered that I always was limitless. <coughs> so, point is, karma kim param? Can karma be limitless? No. Karma tajjadam. Karma is jadam. Inert is product of ignorance. Karma is limited in time. Karma is limited in place. Karma is limited in every way. But the person who performs karma is limited. The means with which he performs karma also is limited. He performs karma for a limited time in a limited place. And therefore, karma or action is limited in every way. How can karma or action which is limited, how can it produce a limitless? Because the result or outcome is in keeping with the input. So, karma which is limited cannot produce limitless. Karma kim param? Is karma limitless? No. Can karma produce limitless? No. That also 
can be understood by this verse. Then what does karma do? Now, Ramana Maharshi continues the discussion on karma in the second verse. Kriti Mahodadho Patana Karanam Phalam Shashvatam Gati Nirodhakam Kriti Mahodadho Mahodadhi Maha Udadhi means ocean. Kruti means karma. Kruti mahodadau in the vast ocean of action. Patana karanam. Here we should understand the, the subject as sakama karma. Sakama karma meaning a desire prompted action. Sakama karma, kruti mahodadau. Patana karanam, a desire prompted action is patana karanam, is a means of falling into kruti mahodadu in the ocean of action. Means that a desire prompted action becomes a means of falling into the ocean of action. The idea is that an action leads to a desire prompted action leads to action does not lead to limitlessness does not lead to any lasting result it leads only to another action why is it so the second line says phalam ashashvatam was phalam phalam means the fruit which means the result Ashashvatam is impermanent, is non-eternal, impermanent, is perishable. So, word phalam is explained as pha and la. This is an interesting way of explaining a word. That is the nirukta way of explaining. The letters which make up the word an explanation based on letters which make up the word. So, word phala is, it comes of two letters, pha and la. The pha, phalgutaya, la, layam ashashvatam gachati, phalgutaya, liyate iti phalam. Liyate, adarsanam gachati perishish. So, that which being insignificant perishish. So, phalam is that, fruit is that which perishes. And that we know from the regular fruits also that they are perishable. So, when the fruits are transported, they always write there, perishable. <coughs> In short, the result of an, a result of an action is perishable. <coughs> and that being the case, naparam, it cannot lead to the limitless. Not only that, but that perishable result unfortunately creates a reaction. See, when I perform an action, there can be two outcomes. Either the action is successful or unsuccessful. <clears throat> Although Swamiji says there can be four results. Okay. The result can be in keeping with my expectation, result can be beyond my expectation, result can be below my expectation, result can be opposite expectation. So, I was crossing the street to catch a bus. There's something, anyway, that's okay. Look at the screen. So, I was on one side of the street. The bus was passing. There was a bus stop across the street. 
the bus was coming i rushed crossed the street got the bus the result is in keeping with my expectation or i rushed but i did not get the bus the the result is opposite of my expectation or well, it did not according to my expectation or i rushed the bus left but a friend came along in a car he gave me a ride much beyond my expectation or while crossing the street a rickshaw appeared from nowhere i was knocked out i found myself in the emergency room hospital opposite to my expectation so result can be anything i had a headache and stomach ache and all kinds of aches were there i took medication for headache the headache went away or i took medication the headache went away stomach ache also went away beyond my expectation or i took medicine but headache did not go or i took medicine not only headache did not go there was ache in my knees you know additional so the action the desire prompted action can give rise to well let us say two kinds of results success or failure since the action was desire prompted therefore it creates a reaction because of an expectation of achieving a certain outcome when that outcome comes then i am elated i am happy there is harsha or relation there is also a reaction understand elation also is a reaction because that elation harsha came on account of the result so it is the outcome that determine what my react response will be my response is determined by the outcome not by myself so harsha elation also is a reaction when something can cause me harsha or elation it can also cause me shoka or depression failure causes disappointment grief success causes elation harsha so harsha and shoka these are the responses that generally arise as a result of an outcome when the action is desire prompted meaning that when i perform an action with a certain personal agenda either that agenda is fulfilled or not fulfilled if agenda is fulfilled i'm very happy or elated agenda is not fulfilled i'm depressed harsha and shoka see if i'm elated i'm successful doesn't stop there unfortunately but success creates in me a desire for more success as we said that's arithmetic with any kind of a gain if i get money i always want more money if i get power i always want more power if i get name and fame I always want more name and fame you never find anybody in the universe ever being satisfied or content with what they have achieved it is not possible if desire is fulfilled it creates lova or greed desire not fulfilled it creates anger krodha or anger so one of the reactions both are binding meaning lova or greed also creates a desire to acquire more and anger or disappointment creates a desire to avoid it so desire result creates another desire raga and dvesha result is favorable there is raga attachment there is unfavorable there is a dvesha aversion so therefore raga desire can also mean raga and dvesha an action initiated by or prompted by raga dvesha creates further raga dvesha <coughs> in raga dvesha attachment and aversion creates further desire 
Attachment creates a desire to acquire something and enjoy something. Aversion creates a desire to avoid something, get rid of something. Both are desires. And desire again prompts an action. So, Kruti Mahodado action leads to result. Result leads to harsha or shoka, elation or depression, attachment and aversion which creates desire to acquire more or to get rid of something. Which desire further prompts an action. So, action, result, desire. Action, result, desire. Thus, Sakama Karma, desire prompted action, leads to further action, which leads to further action, which leads to further action. This is an endless chain of action and reaction. <coughs> and this chain does not simply can get ended in this lifetime, that all the action, the results of the action, which are not fulfilled or not experienced in this lifetime, they are carried forward and they result into the another birth, meaning that actions performed in this birth give rise to the new body, the new birth. So, this body is a result of the actions performed in the past. <clears throat> but unfortunately, this body also becomes the cause of new actions. So, body is both the result, the as well as the, the reason. It is karyam as well as karanam. It is effect as well as cause. This body is the effect of the actions performed in the past. And the body is the cause of the reactions in future. That is how the cycle of birth and death also continues. Kruti maho dadao patana karanam sakama karma a desire from direction becomes a karanam cause for patanam falling into kruti maho dadao into the ocean of action and reaction. <coughs> Kalam ashashvatam. The result that you gain from an action is always ashashvatam. It is impermanent. It is perishable. Because karma is limited. Therefore, karma phala is bound to be limited because the outcome is in keeping with the, the cause. The reaction is equal and opposite to action. Only so what's wrong with that? Let it be. Swamiji, I don't mind being born again. What's the problem with these Vedantins? They always talk of moksha, meaning freedom from birth and death. What's wrong with next birth? I want to be born again. Birth means misery. That's what. By birth is meant misery. Freedom from the chain of birth and death means freedom from misery. Because when the body is there, it is going to have Janma, Mrityu, Jara, Vyadi, birth, death, disease, old age, all kinds of pain are going to be there in the body. When the mind is there, it is going to have complexes. When the mind is there, it has a habitual identification because of ignorance and therefore the mind entertains all kinds of complexes. As well as Swamiji says, this body is a cause of complex from top to toe, from head to tail. The head causes complexes. Whether I have hair or I do not have hair. If I have hair, how much hair do I have? What is the color of the hair? The nose causes another complexes. The ears cause com Everything causes complex. From the childhood, they used to always make fun of me, about my ears, you know. Your ears are like that of an elephant, they used to say, you know. Some people said it is a sign of uh, good luck, you know. Some people used to make fun of me. But anything can cause. They used to say that my nose is like the, uh, like the chimney of a textile mill, you know, something like that.
the lips cause complex, stomach causes complex, everything causes complex. So birth means these complexes, understand. It is not simple birth. But when the birth is there, the mind is there, it is the nature of mind to become identified with this nature. And identification causes complexes, means a keen sense of limitation, which is what makes me sad or unhappy. Therefore, birth means misery. No, Swami, there is a lot of fun in my life. This so-called fun is nothing but an attempt to escape myself, that's all. Because it is so difficult to face my mind. When I am by myself, the mind really tortures me. With all kinds of demands, all kinds of sense of inadequacy, all kinds of judgments about myself, all kinds of criticism. When I am by myself, I am a self-critical person. There is always a running commentary going on about me as to who I am. And my judgment is that I am a limited, inadequate person. Always keep on judging myself. I have expectations of myself as to what I should be. And whenever I fall short of expectation of myself, I judge myself as a failure, as inadequate. I do not enjoy a high self-esteem. This self-judgment also is a cause of lot of misery. So, Kruti Mahodadav Patana Karanam when, when Vedanta says that this Sakama Karma, desire from protection, is a cause for falling into the series of birth and death. That's called samsara. Samsara the Asmini, this samsara. A person keeps on sliding from one birth to the other. Mrutyo samrutyum gachade. He goes from one death to the other. Mrutyo samsara sagara. This samsara sagara. Samsara is conceived, equated or compared with sagara or ocean, which is boundless or endless. So this chain of karma, karma phala being endless is compared to an ocean. Kruti mahodadav patana karanam phalama shashvatam gati nirodakam Gati nirodakam Gati means what? The end. Is an obstruction to gati. Gati means the end. The destination. In fact, this karma or karma phala becomes an obstruction to my reaching the destination. What is the destination? Is there a destination in life? Is there a purpose of life? Vedanta says very much there is a purpose of life. What is the purpose? So when you analyze, what is the desire behind the desire? Although desires are many, but then there is a cause behind all these desires. The desire behind all the desires, as the Swami says, is to become free from desire. Because desire is a manifestation of inner incompleteness, inner inadequacy, inner lack, inner want. I cannot be comfortable with a lack or want. I cannot be comfortable with inadequacy. So even when I want wealth, I want name, favor, anything I want. The basic desire is to become free from a sense of inadequacy. <clears throat> I think that because I don't have money, therefore I am inadequate. I think that because I don't have name, fame, therefore I am inadequate. So I think I am inadequate because of something. So desire, behind all desires, is to become adequate, become free from all limitations, become limitless. So what is Sakama Karma? What is a desire prone protection? An attempt to become limitless. Because the desire behind all desires is to become limitless. 
one cannot become limitless. Becoming means limited. A limited I remains limited. Formerly, I was limited without money. Now, I am limited with money. That's the only difference. And therefore, this karma phala can never be limited and limitless. It is limited. And thus, the sakama karma. The desire from protection shows ignorance on my part, a non-discrimination, a vivek on my part. Ignorance in taking myself to be a limited person and ignorance thinking that somebody will make me limitless. The two kinds of, two aspects of ignorance. One aspect is that I take myself to be limited. That is the result of ignorance. The limitless taking the self to be limited. And second, that is superimposition. Other superimposition is that I have taken for granted that something else, namely wealth, name, fame, recognition, something will make me limitless. And therefore, I am after those things, I am after acquiring those things. But everything there is is limited. Everything in the universe is limited. However great it may be, it is still limited. You become the prime minister, that is the topmost position in India, that is still limited. Our poor prime minister is extremely limited anyway. With a coalition of some, I don't know, 14 parties or something like that, you know. He used to please everybody. And he remains displeased in the process of pleasing everybody else. Anyway, so, even the president of the United States also is very limited. Now you realize how limited that person is. How he is also manipulated, how he is also controlled, how he is restrained. Nothing in the universe is limitless. Nothing can make me free from a sense of limitation. But unfortunately, this recognition does not arise. A person has always hope, if this thing did not make me free, something else will make me free. If something in the earth does not make me free, maybe I should go to heaven, that will make me free. Thus comes a desire for heaven. But then, and in fact, the karma kandis feel that heaven means limitless. This is their concept of heaven. So, karma kanda says that perform righteous actions, perform virtuous actions, perform punya karma. As a result, you will reach heaven and you will have permanent happiness there. The eternal dinner with, with God, you know. So, oh, you will have eternal dinner with God. Swamiji says, eternal dinner means that it does not start. Because what starts will end. That means that you take the soup in your spoon, but don't drink it because otherwise, once it begins, it will come to an end. So, eternal dinner means no dinner at all. It, there is no such thing as eternal heaven. There cannot be. To call heaven or paradise eternal, it doesn't make sense. Swamiji says, Swamiji, do you accept other scriptures as pramanam, as means of knowledge? I don't mind accepting, as long as they are in keeping with reasoning. To say heaven is eternal is not in keeping with reasoning, because heaven also is a result of action. Phalam ashaswatam. Any result is always going to be perishable. And so the Bhagavad Gita says, Kshene Punye Maritalokam Vishanti. So Bhagavad Gita also criticizes this. Sakama karma. Not karma, but Sakama karma. Tre Vidyamam, Somapaha, Udapapaha. Lord Krishna says that there are those who perform very elaborate rituals called Somayaga. And at the end of the ritual, you take as prasada, whatever soma is left over. So, soma is the juice extracted from a certain creeper. It's supposed to be intoxicating, they say. But that is the juice that is, that is offered to soma. As a result, you get heaven. But then, chine punye, marthi lokam vishanti. 
given, you will remain there as long as your punya lasts. Like a five-star hotel, you can stay there as long as your pocket permits you. Moment you run out of money, they will ceremoniously or unceremoniously throw you out. Similarly, they say from Swarga also, you simply drop. Because it's in heaven you don't die. In heaven, you always remain young. There is no old age, there is no death. So then what happens when uh, your punya gets over? Your body simply melts away and you simply fall down. Shine punya, marita lokam vishanti. The people again come back to the world of the mortals to begin all over again. Anyway, therefore, phalam this sakama karma, this desire from action always keeps you in the chain of karma, action, reaction, or birth and death. And unfortunately, person does not learn. This process is going on from the time beginningless and still one does not learn. Gati nirodakam. It becomes an obstruction to the gati, to the very destination that you have. Action is performed with the desire for destination to become free. Action is performed to become adequate. Action is performed to become limitless. But the result being limited becomes an obstruction to your limitlessness. (coughs) Gati nirodakam, the moksha or limitlessness, this action becomes or the phalam becomes the obstruction to the your destination of moksha or becoming limitless. <coughs> so even though they talk of four purusharthas, dharma, artha, kama and moksha. Dharma means performing righteous actions so that you can go to heaven. Artha means wealth and name and fame and recognition which, satisf- which gives you security and which gives you ego gratification. Kama is the sense pleasure. But the desire behind, the purusharta behind dharma, artha, kama is really moksha. A human being only wants one thing and that is to become free from a sense of limitation. As long as this is not recognized, this chain of action and reaction does not end. Phalama shaswatam gati nirodakam It is an obstruction to the gati or destination which is moksha. <clears throat> that means Ramana Maharshi seems to dismiss karma. Does Ramana Maharshi dismiss karma altogether? Is it possible to give up karma? It would be nice if I can give up karma. But I cannot. One does not have freedom to give up action. Try. A person, Lord Krishna says, one cannot remain inactive even for a moment. Naikasit shanamapi jadutishthadi akarmakrut. One cannot remain inactive even for a moment. That is an ignorant person, generally speaking. Why is it so? How come I cannot remain inactive? How come I cannot become free from activity? Karyate karma sarva because a person is compelled to perform an action. By the gunas, by the modifications of prakriti, by the raga and dvesha, the attachment and aversion which is there in the mind, in fact, compel me to perform the action. <coughs> Therefore, as long as my mind has raga and dvesha, Attachment and aversion, so long I cannot give up action even if I want. Otherwise, Lord Krishna says, This fellow will be like a hypocrite. Karma indriyani sanyamya yaste manasasmaran indriyasan vimudhatma mithyachara suchade. It is like this man 
who are they only have problem with their wives, you know, with their spouse. After a certain year, then you know, so this man comes home every evening, and usually his wife obliges him at five o'clock, gives him a cup of tea. This evening he reached home at four thirty, little early. He announced, "I'm home." The wife is in the kitchen; she's busy. This fellow waits for the cup of tea. Does not come. Tea does not come in ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes. He gets impatient. So what happens to my tea? Where is my tea? So I have no time. Make it yourself. Now this was the last straw on the camel's back. He could not bear this any more. So I don't want to live in this house. I'm living right now. She did not even stop him. <laughs> he left. Oh. And straight away goes to Rishikesh. Goes to the ashram. And goes to the. Uh, he is taken to the president of the ashram. Says, "Well, what brings you here? I've come here to meditate." He says, "Oh, very good." And so the Swami says, he calls one of his assistants and says, "Give him the best room on the low, look in the Ganges. Give him that room. He wants to meditate." He is taken there. After a few minutes, he comes back to Swami and says, "I want to meditate, but uh, how long should I meditate? What should I meditate about?" He says, "What was the last thing that you saw when you left home?" He says, "My wife." He says, "Well, meditate on anything other than your wife." He comes back in five minutes. He says, "I'm sorry. I I can't. You know, my wife keeps on coming back in my mind. I can't focus my mind on anything." He says, "Better go home. Even if your wife does not give you tea, you make your tea. But better go home because it is not possible to focus the mind on anything." As long as one is impatient, as long as one is restless, as long as there are these likes and dislikes that make the mind restless, and a restless mind cannot stay quiet even for a moment. And therefore, we always keep ourselves busy with one or the other activity. Given time, activity is ready. Or what should we do now? You know, naturally. Given therefore. When we plan a, 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 a retreat like this, we must also plan the activities. <laughs> Otherwise, not only this is one activity, of course, no doubt the class is there. But what about the remaining time? So, so a list of shops must be ready. Some other places of interest must be ready. Naturally, we need to do something. Meaning that one cannot give up karma even if one wants. You perform the action. Action leads to the chain of action and reaction in ceaseless, never-ending chain, which is binding. At the same time, I cannot give up the action. Also, it's a very pitiable situation. On one hand, I cannot give up the action. On the other hand, action keeps me always bound and limited and miserable. To become free from misery, I perform an action. But action itself becomes the cause of perpetuating the misery. So, what should we do? Then comes the third verse, where Ramana Maharshi says, <coughs> "Ishvara arpitam nechaya krutam." Chittashodhakam mukti sadhakam Ishvararpitam na ichayakrutam What a beautiful solution That on one hand I am compelled to perform an action we accept it That we have ragas and dveshas, we have attachments and aversions. We are born with them. 
as Lord Krishna says, Indriyasya Indriyasyarthe Raga Dvesho Vivasthito. The Raga and Dvesha attachment and aversion are there in every sense organ with reference to their sense objects. And therefore, Shankaracharya says that whatever a person does is prompted by Raga and Dvesha attachment and aversion. This is what our mind is made up of. <clears throat> Meaning that I am as good as my Raga and Dveshas. They define me. What is Raga? Raga means attachment. When I feel that I cannot do without something, then that relationship that I cannot do without something is called Raga or attachment. And what is Dvesha? Aversion. I cannot stand something. Either I hate something or I love something. Only two things. As when Swamiji said, you know, he is distributing fruits as prasada. There is a whole long line of people, picks up a fruit and gives whoever comes. Picked up a banana and gave it to somebody, happened to be a child. Swamiji may have these children are like that, you know. But the elders, they accept whatever you give them because they have a certain reason. Children don't have that. Swamiji, can I have an orange? Says, why? I give you banana. I hate banana, he says, you know. I love orange. So this is the relationship. Either I hate or I love. <clears throat> when I hate something, I have to get rid of it. I cannot, I become miserable in the presence of that. Even by the thought of that, I become unhappy. That's called dvesha or aversion for something. Raga or attachment for something. You know what causes raga and dvesha? It is my basic need to be comfortable with myself. What is my basic need? Is to be comfortable with myself. As well, Swami says, Brihadarani Gopanishad says, Atman Sukamaya Sarvam Priyam Bhavati Whatever is dear, is dear because the self is dear. Meaning that, ultimately, the desire behind all the desires is to be a pleased self. I want happiness. What is happiness? When I am pleased with myself. All I want is a very simple thing, a pleased self. I just want to be happy with myself. You know, very simple requirement. But as I said, I have the most problem with my own self. My problems with the world also ultimately originate from my problem with myself, that I am not happy with myself. I find myself inadequate, I find myself lacking, wanting, incomplete, and then I cannot accept an incomplete, an inadequate self. I have an expectation that I should be adequate, that I should remember everything, should not forget anything, and I find myself forgetting, should hear everything, and I find myself not hearing things, I should understand everything, find myself not understanding things, I should be capable of doing everything, I find myself not capable of doing many things. Thus, at every step, I find myself inadequate, incomplete, and I expect myself to be an adequate person. Therefore, I fail to measure up to my own expectation of myself. This is a problem with a human being that I have an expectation of my own self, and with reference to that expectation, I keep on judging myself whether I am in keeping with that expectation. Whenever I do not measure up to my expectation, I have a sense of dis disappointment, dissatisfaction with my own self. <clears throat> so basically, what I want is just to be comfortable with myself. Therefore, if you come along and say to me, Swamiji, what a wonderful class. Ha! I feel so good about myself. I don't think the class is wonderful. But when you tell me, I guess it must be, I 
I feel so good about myself when you say that. When there is, when you create in me a self-comfort, a self-acceptance. What I basically like is, a, like is a comfortable self because you become a means of creating that comfortable self. You also become an object of like. And some people just make me miserable. They always remind me of something I don't want to remember. My school friend says, Swamiji, you remember in your third grade, you know what happened to you that you failed? Something like that. I say, Forget it. You remember, Swami, when you went to Mathiran that time and you were trying to ride a horse and what happened to you? <laughs> so there are many things about me that I do not like, which I do not want to face. I do not want to accept. And some people have an uncanny knack of embarrassing me within myself, of compelling me to face myself and I'm trying to avoid that self. There are many aspects of myself which I'm trying to avoid. I have not set a settled account with myself. And therefore, when you somehow make me or force me to confront myself, which I want to avoid, I become unhappy. And since you became instrument in making me unhappy, therefore you become an object of dislike. That's all. Basically, cause of likes and dislikes is within myself. There is a basic like or attachment for a pleased self, for a happy self. And a basic dislike for a displeased self. So whatever causes the pleased self, by the way, becomes the object of like. If the same person starts causing a displeased self, makes me uncomfortable, becomes an object of dislike. As the Swami says, when these two get married, I love you, I love you, I love you. After a while, I love you, I love you, I love you. As long as you make me feel comfortable with myself, so long I love you. Atma Sukama. It is for the sake of the pleased self that I love things. If anything creates a displeased self, I am unhappy, I dislike that person. So likes and dislikes are natural with ignorance. It is because of ignorance that I do not know that I am limitless. It is because of ignorance that I take this body-mind-sense complex to be myself. The body is limited, the mind is limited, the senses are limited, everything is limited and therefore, as long as I identify with the body-mind-sense complex, I cannot escape a sense of inadequacy, sense of being limited, limitedness. And therefore, ignorance causes this complex that I am an inadequate one, I am a limited one. And therefore, a need to become free from the inadequacy. There is a moment of what we call the pleased self. It is that moment when I become free from inadequacy, momentarily. Unfortunately, something comes along and reminds me of my inadequate self. Again, I become inadequate and I desire to become adequate. So likes and dislikes create desire. And so, actions are basically prompted by the inner likes and dislikes. Unfortunately, when I perform an action based on way prompted by likes and dislikes, as we said, they create either success or failure. For success, there is an attachment because success makes me feel comfortable with myself. We expect myself to be successful. Unfortunately, I cannot accept a failure self. I expect myself to be always successful. That cannot be. Success cannot always come. And therefore, when failure comes, I become disappointed with myself. I brand myself as inadequate, insufficient, incomplete. I blame myself. I dislike myself. I hate myself. Depends on the degree. 
That is why this Kruti Mahodado Patana Karanam action prompted by likes and dislikes becomes a Karanam, the cause of creating further chain of action and reaction, birth and death. But at the same time, as long as I have dislikes and dislikes, I cannot give up action. And I perform an action as prompted by likes and dislikes, they create further likes and dislikes. It's a vicious circle. <clears throat> so what should I do? Lord Krishna gives a very beautiful solution. Which Ramana Maharshi here reiterates from Bhagavad Gita. Ishwararpitam nichayakrutam chitta shodakam mukti sadakam The second verse said that phalama shasuram gati nirodakam Action can be gati nirodakam an obstruction to my destination that is moksha. And here says mukti sadakam <coughs> that very action also can become mukti sadakam can become a means of mukti or liberation. <clears throat> it's amazing. Action can become an obstruction to my, my, my desire for liberation or an action can become a means of fulfilling my desire for liberation. Action remaining the same. What's the difference? Difference is the attitude with which we perform the action. <clears throat> And that attitude is taught here in the third verse. Ishwararpitam nichayakrutam na ichya na ichayakrutam ichaya na krutam na ichayakrutam That's an interesting way of saying, you know. Na ichayakrutam Meaning that is krutam all right. Action is performed. Not na krutam. Ichaya na krutam you can say, but not na krutam. Action is performed na ichaya without desire. <coughs> so na ichaya Na kam, a kamanaya, without kamana, without desire, when the action is performed. Ishvara pitam, when it is offered to Ishvara, then chitta shodakam becomes a shodakam, becomes a means of purification of mind. Mukti sadakam becomes sadakam, a means of mukti or liberation. A wonderful solution. I don't think that, well, you cannot find this as clearly as stated in the Bhagavad Gita. I'm sure that all traditions say that. Christianity also would say that, Islam, I'm sure they all talk about. But the clarity with which it is taught here. And more clear you are, more dedicated you can be. You know. And so this is a verse which describes the Karma Yoga. We'll continue the discussion tomorrow. <coughs> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadakya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Kruta Vande Bhagavanta Punaf Punaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmedi Murti Veda Vibhagine Vyoma Vat Vyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namaha Om Shanti Shanti Deshanti Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om